good morning. My name is Jackson, and we're the design team from Granite Bay. We're really excited to be here today and to present to you our vision of the Sacramento Rail Yard Entertainment Center. We will start with our promotional video. and my position in our creative project was to work on our second floor floor plans, but mainly I've been working on managing the whole team as a whole to get our whole project together at the time. I am Candice Janade, and I created the interior first floor plan and the interior renderings. The creative project is a project in which students are um, able to work on like sort of a real world engineering problem, engineering building, and it opens them up to many different fields within the engineering okay. The Create Project is a competition in which students from various high schools get the opportunity to present a design proposal. This year it is um, the Sacramento Rail Yards Paint Shop. The thing I enjoy most about the Creative Project is just listening to the mentors and having having them give me all of their advice and it's really opened me up and really allowed me to kind of search my way through what I want to do in life and it's really opened me up to different opportunities and it's really helped me out a lot. The physical model was really interesting to me because it is my knowledge of the CNC work uh, cut out walls and panels and everything. But uh, besides that, I love the idea of I enjoy the fact that I actually got to sit down and learn about the acoustics of various groups. Starting in 1869, the Central Pacific and Union Pacific Roads met in Promontory, Utah. This marked the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad and a new beginning in the American society. The Sacramento Rail Yards, built in the 1860s, were an integral part of this accomplishment. So now the city of Sacramento presents us with a very unique opportunity. What was originally a railroad maintenance facility now lies 200 acres of open real estate and only a few original buildings remain. However, our team was tasked with renovating the old paint shop located west of the current day Bid Street Bridge and north of the newly lined Amtrak rail lines. We have identified three key points for consideration. First, our entertainment venue will be diverse in its uses as it will hold orchestras, concerts, lectures, and other productions. Our doors will be open for everyone to enjoy. Second, we took into consideration the existing location of the building. In Sacramento, there are many entertainment venues nearby, such as the Golden One Center, Rayleigh Field, the Memorial Auditorium, and even the Wells Fargo Pavilion. However, these lack the intimacy ours will have. In our entertainment complex, you will have the best of everything in one place, and will certainly come to the attention of workers, residents, and sports fans nearby. Finally, our proposed concept fits perfectly within the existing structure. Much like that of the Harris Center in Folsom, our concept will have three separate theaters. You will be able to walk through one, holding an orchestra or concert, the next, a lecture, and you'll even be able to enjoy the jazz bar upstairs beforehand. 
Not only will our entertainment venue honor Sacramento's history, but it brings to light a new future and will appeal to all sorts of people who like different genres of music, lectures, and other productions. Hello, my name is Brad, and I'll be filling in for Alan P. Sixker. Some factors that influence our team to design an entertainment venue are the building's location and several points of entry from surrounding roadways. Alec was responsible for creating a site plan for our building and the surrounding areas. Our building sits just outside of an Amtrak station and within walking distance from the heart of Sacramento. This is important because it allows easy access to the site via multiple transit options. Our plan assumes that guests will utilize trains, transit, cycling, and walking when visiting the entertainment complex. But if additional parking is required, a parking garage can be constructed here. Staff member and performing par performer parking will be located at the rear of the building. And anybody arriving by rail will find that the exit from the station emerges directly in front of the main entrances. Attendees arriving by other means will find the four main entrances with ease. The majority of the passive buyers on Interstate 5 will have a relatively clear line of sight to the building due to the elevation. So, to attract a larger audience, live shows can be utilized as a form of advertising with low cost. The neighboring Fish Street is also substantially elevated above the building, which means that the nearest entrance on it funnels car and foot traffic to the front and side of the building. I mentioned foot traffic because a Major League Soccer stadium is expected to be built just northeast of the building and within a few miles. So one can expect that large groups of people may migrate to and from these locations. But to attract these, group, the venue, these groups, the venue will need to be attractive visually. Hi, my name is Katie Lee and I'll be introducing our exterior renderings. One of the most important aspects in our design was to honor the historical significance of the building. And we achieved this by keeping and renovating the original deep red brick walls and by installing antique style French double doors in our four main entrances on the west side. At first, we viewed the extensive amount of archways as a challenge, but we ended up using them to our advantage. They helped us bring in some contemporary aspects to our design. By converting many of the archways to large windows, we can allow lots of natural lighting into our lobby area, which helps our guests feel welcomed into the entertainment center. The arches in the theaters were filled in with new brick selected to complement the existing walls. Another modern aspect we included was our new dark gray metal roofing, which replaces the multiple roofing materials used on the existing building. This is extremely visible from our rooftop patio where one can enjoy a few drinks under the night sky. The juxtaposition of the new modern large windows and the dark roof with the antique doors and original brick helps to merge the two eras in Sacramento, combining history with the future. Hello, my name is Candace and I'll be presenting to you the interior floor plans. As you enter through one of the four brick archways, you will come across a spacious lobby, a spacious lobby that includes a place to purchase tickets, as well as a concessions area with comfortable seating. Performers and staff can enter through one of the three archways located at the back of the building. The first floor consists of three multi-use venues. On the south of our building, Stage 3 is our largest venue with a 1,080 square foot stage, which is perfect for large crowds and concerts. Stage two is our more flexible venue with an 800 square foot stage and unfixed seating that allows it to be customized for each event taking place. And stage one is our more formal venue with a 565 square foot stage, which is perfect for plays and other theatrical performances. On the northeast end of our building, you will come across a stairway and an elevator <coughs> accessible from the lobby to reach the second floor. As you continue down the hallway, you will enter the public bathrooms, the staffing area, and an additional set of stairs to reach the second floor. 
As you walk up the stairs, you will enter our trendy runaway train jazz bar, which features such as a bar supplied by a full kitchen, two bathrooms, pool tables, and plenty of seating to lounge around. There's also seating on our outdoor intimate rooftop patio. My name is Luke, and I will be presenting our physical marker. The brick arches are original to the building, built in the 1860s. While they have a historic charm that will add great, intriguing detail into our building here in Sacramento, the brick arches are no longer up to present-day building code, seismic code, or safe for the general public. Our structural retrofit will require a series of structural beams and columns as demonstrated on the back side of our model. Dead loads and live loads will be mainly determined by our roof structure since our upstairs bar and lounge is not supported by the brick arches, but structural walls instead. The brick facade will serve as our main architectural feature. Stru the roof loads will be transferred to structural beams, then to columns, then to eight foot deep concrete footings. Lateral loads will also be transferred to beams, columns, ultimately to the deep footings. As a result of our structural retrofit, the public will be much safer during a seismic event or other natural disaster. Hello, my name is Jordan and I am in charge of our group choice, acoustics. There are three key aspects to the acoustics of auditoriums. To minimize the ambient noise within the room, to manage sound within the room, and to be flexible enough to allow for different uses. The first thing to do is to manage the ambient noise. The noise criterion curves shown show varying levels of ambient noise. NC15 is the highest recommended level for speaking, and therefore our goal will be to design the soundproofing to meet NC10 levels. External noise from the active rail line outside and from the other two stages must be attenuated. Because brick attenuates sound well, the priority is on the openings created by doors, windows, and arches. These will be filled with acoustic doors and, and brick infill. Once we have effectively created a choir room, we need to manage sound within the auditorium. This requires minimizing standing waves. As shown in this example at Harris Center, this can be done by using a combination of curved and tilted walls. Shape can also be added with hanging wooden acoustic panels. Standard acoustic panels may also be added to the walls along with carpeting for sound absorption. Finally, the rooms must be flexible enough to meet the different requirements of both music and lecture. The first step in this is putting in a sound reinforcement and reproduction system, including a sound booth. This would accommodate both dance groups as well as groups that use the sound reinforcement system. Other features like adjustable curtains on the walls and removable cushions on the chairs would allow the reverberation of the room to be changed on a more minute level. Thanks, Jordan. As you can see from our presentation, our proposed multi-use entertainment complex will honor Sacramento's history, as our proposed concept fits perfectly within the existing structure. It will also serve a wide range of audiences and embrace their unique reason for being here. Finally, it's simply multi-use. From orchestras to concerts, lectures and plays, the possibilities are limitless. After all, this is Sacramento, and Sacramento has always and always will be open to a world of possibilities. Thank you.